A hip that is painful as a result of osteoarthritis can severely affect your ability to lead a full, active life. Over the last 25 years, major advancements in hip replacement have greatly improved the outcome of this surgical procedure. Artificial hip replacement, also called hip arthroplasty, is becoming more and more common as the population of the world begins to age. Before we describe the procedure, let's look first at the artificial hip itself. The artificial hip is also referred to as a prosthesis. A prosthesis is a mechanical device that is designed to replace a biological part of the body. There are two major types of artificial hip replacements. A cemented prosthesis is held in place by a type of epoxy cement that attaches the metal to the bone. An uncemented prosthesis is covered with a fine mesh of holes on the surface that allows bone to grow into the mesh and attach the prosthesis to the bone. Both are still widely used. In some cases, a combination of the two types is used in which the femoral stem is cemented into place and the socket is not cemented. The decision about whether to use a cemented or uncemented artificial hip is usually made by the surgeon based on your age and lifestyle and the surgeon's experience. Each prosthesis is made of two main parts. The acetabular component or socket replaces the acetabulum. The acetabular component is made of a metal shell with a plastic inner liner that provides the bearing surface. The plastic used is so tough and slick that you could ice skate on a sheet of it without much damage to the material. The femoral component, the stem and ball, replaces the femoral head. The femoral stem component is made of metal. The ball is attached to the femoral stem and may be made of either metal or ceramic material. There are several different ways of entering the hip joint to perform surgery on the hip. These are referred to by orthopedic surgeons as approaches to the hip. A less invasive approach to the hip joint pioneered over the last 20 years is being used more frequently today. Each approach has its own benefits, but the anterior approach is felt by many to be the best option today. The surgeon begins by making an incision on the side of the thigh to allow access to the hip joint. This incision is usually around four to six inches, but may be lengthened if more room is needed to complete the operation. Once the skin incision is made, the muscles below the skin are separated to allow access to the hip joint. The nerves and blood vessels that run down the thigh in front of the hip joint are protected with special metal retractors. The anterior hip capsule that covers the front of the hip joint is opened by making an incision in the joint capsule. Once the hip joint is entered, the surgeon dislocates the femoral head from the acetabulum. The femoral head is removed by cutting through the femoral neck with a power saw. Attention is then turned towards the socket. The surgeon uses a special reamer, a cutting tool used to shape the bone to remove cartilage from inside the acetabulum. The surgeon shapes the socket into the form of a half sphere. This is done to make sure the metal shell of the acetabular component will fit perfectly inside. After shaping the acetabulum, the surgeon tests the new component to make sure it fits just right. In the typical artificial hip replacement, the metal shell is held in place by the tightness of the fit or in some cases by using screws to hold the shell in place. To begin replacing the femoral head, a drill is used to create the initial space to begin the process of preparing the femoral canal. Once the drilling is complete, special rasp or filing tools are used to shape the hollow femur to the exact shape of the metal stem of the femoral component. Once the size and shape are satisfactory, the stem is inserted into the femoral canal. In the uncemented variety of femoral component, the stem is held in place by the tightness of the fit into the bone, similar to the friction that holds a nail driven into a hole that is slightly smaller than the diameter of the nail. In the cemented variety, the femoral canal is enlarged to a size slightly larger than the femoral stem, and the epoxy type cement is used to bond the metal stem to the bone. The metal ball that makes up the femoral head is then inserted. The hip is relocated and tested for range of motion and stability. 
The surgeon literally moves the leg in a full range of motion while watching the ball move in the plastic socket. The purpose of this step is to make sure that the hip moves well through the normal range of motion and does not tend to dislocate. Once the surgeon is satisfied that everything fits properly and is stable, the incision is closed with stitches. Several layers of stitches are used under the skin and either stitches or metal staples are then used to close the skin. A bandage is applied to the incision and you are returned to the recovery room. The hospital stay after the procedure varies between one to four days in the hospital. You'll be on your way home when you can demonstrate a safe ability to get in and out of bed, walk up to 75 feet with your crutches or walker, and go up and down stairs safely. Patients who still need extra care may be sent to a rehabilitation unit until they are safe to go home. Full recovery from an artificial hip replacement usually takes about three months. After that, you should be able to enjoy the painless mobility that an artificial hip replacement provides.